Hi there, Andrew here. I love to be entertained, but I have no patience, so I give every new show I watch only one episode to hook me. Welcome to Debut Review. So, The Dragon Prince is a show on Netflix. It's animated. It looks like it's CG animated. It's about a prince who's a dragon. and goes on adventures and breathes fire. And I just read um, that it was renewed for four more seasons. It uh, currently has three seasons on Netflix, uh, but the full story had not been told. And uh, people were like, oh gosh, is it going to be renewed? There's more to the story! And yeah, it got renewed for another four seasons, which means the show probably sucks, because if it was any good, Netflix would have canceled it. So the show description reads, An extraordinary discovery inspires two human princes and an elven assassin to team up on an epic quest to bring peace to their warring lands. It, I, I take it the extraordinary discovery is the titular dragon prince. Do they find an egg and it hatches and we've got a cute little baby dragon sidekick? That could be wonderful or that could be completely annoying. Or that's not what's happening in the show. I don't know. Let's find out. Huh. The parallels between this show, The Dragon Prince, and the last show I did a debut review for, Avatar The Last Airbender, uncanny. Very similar setup to uh, both the shows. Um, and as you might recall, I really didn't care for the first episode of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. So... First things first, the petty thing. Let's get the petty thing out of the way. The Dragon Prince is a CG animated show, and it has some of the most stilted animation I have ever seen in a 3D animated project. Um... It's stuttery. It, it, it's, it feels like it's running at, like the characters animate at 15 to 20 frames a second. It feel, it's really jerky. It is some of the jerkiest anima CG animation I've seen. It, it almost feels like it's, in, it's animated entirely with keyframes and no in-betweens. I hope that improves, because... That was so distracting to me that I had to rewind it twice to, um, pardon me, ah. <clears throat> I had to rewind it twice because I was missing the story. It opened, like Last Airbender, it opens with a prologue. In the beginning, there were nations of people and they didn't like each other, so they warred it uh, together, but there was one super dude who was, you know, uh, keeping the peace, and then the super dude went away, and now, oh, they're fighty, they're fighty, it's been going on for a hundred years, a thousand years, oh, fighty, and now we're waiting for the, the Avatar or the Dragon Prince to come back and bring peace to the land. Um, same show. <laughs> um, but man, I was so distracted by the jerky animation that I, 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 two, maybe three times during this episode, I was just like, I'm sorry, what was going on? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to uh, scrub back through the show. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, there is magic in the world, and there are six sources of magic. The sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the sky and the ocean, which... I, I would think that Earth covers, but apparently not. Six sources of magic. Earth, ocean, sky, 
Sun, moon, star. That seems like everything to me. <laughs> I mean, what the hell is left? Just, just the empty space between all of those things? Where is there not magic? But, um, there was this dude some time ago, this human dude, who was like, you know, these six sources of magic, which encompass pretty much everything, not enough for me. I need a seventh source of magic. Dark magic. What is dark magic? I guess it's kind of sucking the life force out of magic creatures, which allows you to throw fireballs and your eyes go all black. Well, <clears throat> so in this magical world, there are humans, there are dragons, and there are elves, which have uh, three fingers and an opposable thumb and horns, which is cool. Actually, I'm not sure if they have horns or if they're just wearing like headgear, but uh, whatever. Inter unique design. Um, it's like, oh, we can't just do the, the, the tall, pale, blonde hair and pointy ears. Give them horns. There we go. Um, so, if I got the setup correct, and maybe I was distracted by the jerky animation, but I rewound it and listened to it again, I think what happened is that the elves and the dragon were so horrified by this one human dude who threw a fireball after sucking the life out of some birds that they rounded up all of the humans and pushed them over onto the west side of the continent because it's like Pangaea. There's just one big continent. So the elves and the dragons are like, all right, all humans, you all suck because of this one guy. And all the humans are like, thanks, Barry. Thanks a lot, man. Just had to throw fireballs. Didn't, couldn't get your magic from the sun or the moon or the earth or the sky or the stars or the ocean. Had to suck them out of some birds and throw a fireball. All right, Barry? Thanks, dude. Now we all got to move to the West Coast. Barry. Um, yeah, uh, so they round up all the humans and they shove them onto the west side of the continent and they draw a big line across the continent and they say, that's your side, you stay on your side, and we dragons and elves will stay on our side. And the dragon king, which is a, a big, big dragon, uh, sits on the, the uh, boundary and keeps the peace. Until one day... The humans uh, just use a bunch of dark magic to suck the life out of Daddy Dragon, and they destroy his one egg, the Dragon Prince. So now, a hundred years or whatever later, we have big, big, big war between everybody, and no one's happy. And it's all thanks to Barry. Thanks, Barry! <sighs> you know, Barry was a bit of a jerk. Sucking life out of birds to throw a fireball when he could have sucked magic energy out of literally anything. Because again, the major sources of magic are earth, ocean, sky, stars, moon, sun, literally everything. But no, had to suck magic out of birds and ruin it for everybody. Don't know why they couldn't just make Barry move over to the west, but whatever. <clears throat> so, um... I like this show. Uh, I thought it was a successful first ep episode. Uh, weird premise uh, and jerky animation, animation notwithstanding. Because I felt that the, uh, the difference between this and Avatar Last Airbender for me was I actually enjoyed the characters and the characters' interactions with each other. Um, and they had, there, there's the, the two princes, uh, Prince One and Prince Two, uh, are both kids. One's 15 and one's, yeah, maybe eight or something like that. And so you're like, oh, an eight year old, he's going to be annoying. Precocious, yes, but so far not annoying. And he's got a cute little dragon monster dog thing. And you're like, oh no, cute animal sidekick. But it's cute and uh, Grumpy little, it's kind of like a bulldog dragon thing. It's fine. It hasn't bothered me so far. It's not like Glomer and Punky Brewster or uh, 
uh, Slimer and the real Ghostbusters, you know, super annoying. So far, it's fine. Um, you have um, <clears throat> you have the king, and you have like his uh, man at arms kind of kind of do royal guard dude, and his kid um, is like captain of the guard maybe, and he's you know this really. Uh, you know, tall, fair, handsome. He's the he's the guy in charge, and it's his job to teach the prince number one, the elder one, how to sword fight. And prince number one is not a sword fighter; he's a bookworm. And you think, oh, he's gonna be a typical jock, and he's gonna be a jerk, and he is a bit of a jerk, but he not in not in a mean or sadistic way. Uh, it's actually really funny the relationship between these two really sings. Um, so they're sword fighting. He's like, all right, all right, here, here we go. Perry, 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 bop, you're dead. Perry, 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 bop, you're dead. Perry, you know, it, it's really playful without being mean. And then Captain of the Guard's sister walks by, and Prince Number One is like, oh, she's pretty. And he's, and she, she walks by, and she's reading a book, and she's heading right for this giant tree. And Prince Number One is like, um, um, he's like, no, 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 just, just, just let it happen. And he's like, oh, my sister's going to walk into a tree. My sister's going to walk into a tree. It's going to be great. And he goes, sister, stop. And she's like, oh, shoot, tree. <laughs> Is that new? It, it, it's like a 12-foot wide trunk. He's like, oh, pretty new. It's only been there for about 300 years. Um, so she sits down and uh, watches them dueling. And uh, the captain of the guard dude you know, throws Prince Number One a bone and allows him to defeat him to Im impress his sister. So he's a nice guy. Um, <clears throat> there's a there's a scene that could have gone south for me where uh, the younger prince breaks into the kitchen and steals some pastries with his dog with his dog dragon thing. And you're like, oh no! But it's actually played pretty well. You know, the the chef doesn't chase him with a butcher knife or anything. He's like, dude, these are not for you. Go away. And then the d dog is behind him eating things. He's like, hey, stop it. And he turns around and the, and the kids grab him. It's like, it's like, I'm right here. What are you doing? Um, so I felt the, uh, the, the characters were pretty strong. Uh, some of the writing goes a little too far in being cute. For instance, uh, Captain of the Guard gets a magic moth to find the moonshine at moonshine. It's, yeah, sure. The moonshine elves. Because they're powered by the moon, you see. Um, <clears throat> so, and you need a giant moth to find the moonshine elves. And he says, well, let's hope it's good at finding elves and not just sweaters. And he looks at the guy right next to him and he says, because moths eat sweaters, you see. It's like, yes, very, very, very funny, sir. I didn't really need that last bit. Or maybe it could have just been played a little bit differently. There are a couple bits in there where it feels like it's trying a bit too hard to be cute or anachronistic. Um, but overall, um, liking the characters, liking the, a bunch of the writing. Um, who doggy, that jerky animation is tough to get past. But um, hopefully that improves as the series goes on. Uh, also, this looks like it's going to be a one continuous story rather than um, um, <clears throat> just standalone episodes. Because uh, this episode just doesn't end. It just kind of stops. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think I'll uh, watch another episode or so and uh, see where it goes. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Not without its problems, but uh, hey, I, I debut reviewed a show and ended up uh, mostly liking it, so things are looking up. <laughs>